My name's Evie, I'm currently in lower six here at Barney and I play the oboe and today I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to the instrument. So the oboe is called a wind instrument and it's part of the woodwind family because you blow air through it. It has this funny thing at the top called a reed which I'll explain in a moment and is generally made out of wood and has these metal keys which as you put different combinations of keys down it changes the pitch. Now you could be forgiven for thinking that the oboe looks a little bit like a clarinet, which is true, it does, in that it's a similar kind of shape, you hold it in a similar way, but it makes a very different sound, and that's largely down to the reed that we blow into at the top. Now the oboe has something called a double reed at the top of it, and this is how we make the sound. So a double reed, as the name might suggest, is two pieces of cane tied together like this, and when you blow air down the instrument, they vibrate together and they make a noise. Now this process is a very similar one to something some of you may have done with a blade of grass, where you place it in between your thumbs and you blow as hard as you can and it makes a really squeaky high-pitched noise, which, if I show you on this, sounds quite similar. So to put the instrument together, uh, it's a fairly simple process in that there's only three bits to put together and it's quite again similar to other wind instruments. Uh, so you start with the middle joint and you put on your bell. You have to be really gentle and careful because it's a very delicate instrument and you also have to make sure that the key work lines up like so, just there. If I get my finger on that close. And then obviously you just again slot in the top joint and very gently making sure the key work lines up right there. There we go. So now we've put the oboe together and understand how the reed works, there are two more things that we need to know. First of all, we need to know how you blow into the reed, and this is most easily explained by imagining that you're rolling your lips around the reed, and then you blow. So if you place the reed on your bottom lip, and then roll in your top lip, it should make a sound like this, as we've already heard. Now the second thing you need to know is where you put your hands and your fingers. So much like the clarinet, your left hand goes at the top of the instrument and your right hand goes at the bottom. And quite handily with the oboe, uh, there are six obvious keys where your three fingers on your right hand and your three fingers on your left hand can go. Uh, and at the back, there's this key here for your thumb and some other key work for your pinkies, which uh, basically allows you to play more notes. So. The next step would be to put the reed in the instrument and see what we can do. So the more keys that you put down, essentially the lower the instrument goes. There are some exceptions to that rule, but I'll see if I can show you a little bit. Lots of composers throughout history have used the oboe in their works. Uh, in the Baroque era in particular you can find lots of concertos written for the oboe which are all really lovely. Uh, in more recent times film composers have used the oboe in their scores. Uh, the most famous of those would be the score for The Mission which was written by the recently departed Ennio Morricone. Uh, and if you'd like to hear that you can tune into Friday evening's film concert where I play Gabriel's oboe. However, one of my favourite uses for the oboe is its role in the orchestra and in orchestral repertoire. Uh, I think the oboe is the most important instrument in the orchestra because it has to tune the orchestra, and it's quite hard to relay this over technology, but it's, it's quite a loud and a piercing sound. Uh, and I say that in the kindest and most endearing possible way to my poor instrument. Um, but it means that lots of instruments can indeed hear the sound that they need to, to be reproducing in order to tune to it. So if any of you have ever gone to a concert, or go to in the future, you should listen out for the sound of a concert A, which is how an orchestra tunes. And that is the very, very first notes that you will ever hear an orchestra play. And it sounds like this. Now, because I love orchestral writing for the oboe so much, I'm going to leave you with a one of my favourite solos in the orchestral repertoire for the oboe, 
and if you've ever been to a ballet called Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky, you might have heard this. Uh, it really is one of the most famous and beautiful solos for the oboe. As always, if anything in this video or the Festival of Music has piqued your interest, don't hesitate to get in touch with Mr Dawson.